Laurie, it is a love story about two people trying to find each other and trying to find their way in the world and they're just young and idealistic and driven to succeed. You can't help who you fall in love with. There's an extreme person in Robert's life, but he can't help stop loving her and will defend her and will die for her and risk his life for her and, and leave England and leave his parents and say goodbye to all that, which is the title of his most famous book. He was an oddball. He was very eccentric. He was very into himself. He was a very famous war poet along with Wilfred Owen, Siegfried Sassoon, uh, Brooke, and, and, and those people. He went in there totally idealistic and totally patriotic and totally the and totally focused on defending the ideals of the British Empire and he came back like most men do changed it detracted him so much that he couldn't really write anymore so all this prolific writing he was doing at the war on the front and getting notoriety kinda held him back now my story takes place in 1920s jazz and there's that frivolity and make uh, devil may care attitude and that is where that period of my story begins is he is suffering from this shell shock and how does he get out of it? How does he move on to the next chapter in his life? There's three women in, in Robert's life. Um, first his mother who basically gave him a moral compass and a strong and strict moral compass by which he lived and as an adult he followed through until our story begins. Nancy was very supportive in the beginning and they saw the world in the same way and I think Robert appreciated her talent as an artist which was superb also appreciated the fact that she was one of the early feminists and of course the mother and Nancy clashed. Laura Riding was who she was and made the choices she made. Here comes this woman from New York City Jewish Lower East Side background totally what people perceive of as Americans especially in Europe kind of loud brash speaks their mind doesn't have that British reserve she's very domineering very you know prone to evil you know thoughts and actions but uh, however great company great fun she did have a circle of followers that Robert was a part of but you know you don't do that without some sort of charisma Robert had this great inner circle of friends like um, D.H. Lawrence like Siegfried Sassoon like T.S. Eliot However, because they rejected Laura and uh, Laura writing as a writer and as a kind of person, and Robert stuck with her and was her greatest defender and disciple, Nancy totally loved Laura's freedom and free love ways and also her attitude towards everything. It was all built out of the passion of the writing and the passion of trying to be free and expressionistic. So hence comes in Laura writing, which is the crux of our story and how they form a menage a trois. They all took from the relationship with each what each of them wanted. Keeping the cast young, I think, will entice a younger audience to learn about this period in uh, British, uh, British life. The older audiences will be there, the people that love these classic going back in time stories, but I think the younger audiences will really latch on to the love aspect, the love story, the, the driven, the drama of what happens between these young people because I think they can identify with the idealism of trying to start off fresh and trying to make a start in their careers or in their lives.